Talk, Episode 4, Part 1 of Understanding Division for Unit 4. In this unit, students will learn multiple strategies to divide. These strategies are very similar to the strategies that they use for multiplication. And just like in the multiplication unit, we are waiting to teach the traditional algorithm, also known as long division, until the end of the unit when students have a firm and concrete understanding of what division is and what it should look like. Before we start looking at the strategies for division, it's important to note some key vocabulary that students need to know. 564 is our dividend, that's what we are dividing. 4 is our divisor, that's what we are dividing by. Now we can be putting 564 things into groups of 4 or into 4 equal groups. And our quotient will be either the number of things in those groups or the number of groups that we have. The first strategy that we are going to look at is the distributive property. To use the distributive property, students need to rely heavily on their understanding of multiplication because multiplication is the inverse of the division. So if we look at our division problem, 564 divided by 4, students need to think 4 times what number equals 564? Let's look at a model to help us figure this out. So this model is an array or a box model just like we use in our distributive property and partial products in multiplication. We know that we have 4 times some number and it's going to equal 564. We need to break 564 into smaller numbers that are easily divided by. 4 times 100 equals 400. 4 times 40 equals 160 and 4 times 1 equals 4. 400 plus 160 plus 4 equals our dividend of 564. 100 plus 40 plus 1 equals our quotient of 141. Now it's important to know that students can break apart the dividend any way that they choose. Just like in multiplication, the distributive property needs to be recorded in expressions using parentheses. So let's look at what that would look like. We have 564 divided by 4. In this model, we broke 564 into 400 plus 160 plus 4. So you can see that recorded here. Then we divided each of those pieces, 400 divided by 4, 160 divided by 4, and 4 divided by 4. Then we add up those pieces to get our quotient of 141. The next strategy that students can use to divide is repeated subtraction. In repeated subtraction, students take the dividend, 564, and subtract by the divisor, 4, repeatedly until there's nothing left to subtract. Let's see what that would look like. We would start with 564 minus 4 is 560 and keep going until there's nothing left. Now, knowing from the last example, we know that we would have to subtract 141 times until we get to zero. Students will quickly see that this is not an efficient method of division, and it takes too long and leaves too much room for error. So they might start thinking, I wonder if there are larger numbers that I could subtract by. This strategy of subtracting by larger groups of four is called partial quotients. Before students start the partial quotient strategy, they need to list out some basic facts to help them so they know which multiples they can subtract by. They can start with 4 times 1, 4 times 2, and 4 times 5 because those are fast facts that most students know by memory. Then they can use their patterns of multiplication to extend it until they get to a multiple that is close to 564. In this case, our largest multiple is 400. We're going to take our dividend and subtract by a large multiple, which is 400 and we have 164 left over. We need to record the number of groups of four we have subtracted from our dividend. When we subtracted 400, we subtracted 100 groups of four. Now we have 164 left to divide, so we need to subtract the largest multiple we can, which is 80. 80 is 20 groups of four, so we record that with our other partial quotients. When we subtract 80, we have 84 left over. So we can subtract 80 again, which is equal to 20 more groups of four. Now we have four left over, which is equal to one group of four. If we add up all of our partial quotients, 100 plus 20 plus 20 plus one, 
we get 141 as our quotient. Our final method of division is using base 10 and tying it to the traditional algorithm. So let's go ahead and set up our division problem. We have 564 divided by 4. So we have 500, 6 tens, and 4 ones. And we are going to put them into four equal groups. Let's do this step by step. I have 500, so I can put 100 in each group. I have 100 left over, so I need to regroup that 100 into 10 tens. Let's see what that looks like on our long division algorithm. We start with 500, and we're going to put them into four groups. We know that 100 will go in each group. Now we need to multiply to see how many hundreds we used. 100 times 4 is 400. Subtract to see how many hundreds are left over. We have that 100 left over that we regrouped into 10 tens. So now we need to count up to see how many tens we have left. We have these 10 tens plus the 6 tens that were there to equal 16 tens. Now, I can go back to my model and put four tens in each group. So I record on my division algorithm four tens in each group times four groups is 16 tens that I used. I subtract to see how many tens I have left over. I have no tens left over, so now I can bring down my ones and divide my ones. I have four ones, so one one goes in each group. I record that on my division algorithm, 1, 1 times 4 groups is 4 ones that I used. I subtract to see how many are left over, and I have no ones left over. With any of our division strategies, it is important for students to check their work. They need to multiply the quotient, 141, by the divisor, 4, and that should equal the dividend, 564. That's all for part one of this episode. Scan the next QR code on your parent link letter for part two. See you next time.